Hi, welcome back. So in this segment, we'll be talking about uh, conditional statements and for loops and what the scope of the C++ program is, or, or the scope of a variable is, okay? So we'll be talking about the conditional statements. These would be if statements, if else, and else. Talk about loops, for loops specifically, although there are other kinds of loops, and the scope. All right. So for conditional statements, as I said, we have if statements, we have if else statements, and else statements. Okay? And in these conditional statements, we'll be testing um, some expression to see if it's true or not. All right? And so we may be testing if something is equal. Now, when we're doing a conditional statement for equals, we actually do a double equal sign. And I'll show you in the code itself what that would look like. I have a double equal sign for equals. We have, of course, your standard greater than and less than. If you want to do greater than or equal to or something like that, you would use the appropriate greater than or less than sign with an equals. If you want to have multiple statements, you can have and, which would be a double, double ampersand, or you can do or, which is a double vertical line, okay? So let's go to the code now, and we'll look at some of these. So here you can see in my code, I still have my IO stream, so I can print statements to screen. If statements don't require any additional header files, though, okay? So we might have a statement. Um, I'll create an, a declare an integer a, and I'll just set it equal to two, for example. Now I'll have an if statement. I'll do if open parentheses, and I'll say if a is equal to three, and then I do an open brace, and a close brace will close that if statement, okay? Now within that statement, if, if the condition is true, then, for example, I will print to screen the value of A. Okay? So obviously in this case, A is equal to two. It's not equal to three. And so when I run this program, nothing will happen, all right, because the condition isn't met. So we type in make run, and you can see nothing was printed to the screen, all right? So let's go back here, and I'll do an if else. Else if, I mean. That's a typo there. Let me fix that. That would be else if. All right. So as, it, as that name implies, else if requires another if statement to come before it. So if the first statement is not true, then it moves on to the else if statement. So I'll do else if a equals 2 then I'll print to screen some other message. For example, statement two is true. This, by the way, this slash n acts the same as a standard n line. It's a character turn. Okay, so now as I run this program, think about what's going to happen. First, it will come to the, the if statement, and it will check if a is equal to three. a is equal to two in this case, and so we will skip the expression inside that first if statement. Then we'll move on to the else if 
because the first statement was false. Else if a is equal to 2, which it is, then it will print the screen statement 2 is true. All right, so let's watch that. I'll run that, and you can see exactly only the second statement is printed. Now let me go back here, and just to emphasize that else if only runs if the first if statement is false, let me type in if a equals 2. All right, so now the first statement is true, which means it won't move on to the second else if statement. All right, so we run that, and you see it prints the value of a, which is 2, and it doesn't move on to, this, to the else if statement. Okay? Now, we could have multiple else if statements uh, if we wanted to. The third type of statement would be else. And else will, it will enter the else statement if none of the previous if statements are true. And so we don't put a condition on else. Uh, the implied condition is that none of the other if statements were true, okay? So here, if, if we reach this last condition, I'll have it print out, no conditions are met, for example. Okay, and I'll come back to the previous two statements and change them to a equals 3 so that they aren't true. Now when we run the code, we'll check the first if statement, which will be false, which will be not be met. Else if a is equal to 3 is not met, and so we will move into the last statement else, okay, because none of the previous conditions were met. So we'll run that, and as you can see, it's printed no conditions are met. We went, into the, we went into the else statement. Okay? Now let me demonstrate the and and or, okay? Now to do that, I'll introduce another integer. I'll do int a equals 2 and b equals 3. And in my if statement, I'll have if a equals 2, I'll do a double ampersand, and b is equal to 3. Then we'll print that the condition is met. Okay. And so the and statement, of course, as implied, checks both statements. Is a equal to 2 and is b equal to 3? If so, then we'll move inside the if statement. In this case, both should be met, and so you see we've moved inside the if statement and printed the statement. The condition is met. All right? Now, if I change one of those values, if I change instead checking to see if a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 2, so now the first condition is met but the second is not, that means we will not move into the body of the if statement because the AND requires that both conditions are met. So I've run that, and you can see that the statement was not printed to the screen. Okay? But if you do have two conditions and you only want one of them, or you only need at least one of them to be met, you can use OR. So we'll use this double vertical line. And now, since A is equal to 2, even though B is not equal to 2, we can run that and see that it has moved inside the if statement as we want it, okay? We can, of course, also do the greater than, less than, and equals, greater than or equal to. So, for example, if a is greater than or equal to 1, since a is equal to 2, the condition should be met, okay? All right. So those are a few examples for our conditional statements. Now let's move on to for loops, okay? Now the basic structure of a for loop is as follows here. So in a for loop, we'll begin, we'll use the word for, and then in parentheses, we'll have three uh, separate sections here. We have the declaration, we have the condition, 
and then we increment forward or iterate forward. Okay? Again, we can use these curly braces to specify the body of the for loop. All right? So let's do that over here in the code. <clears throat> so what do I mean by declaration? Often in for loops, we will use an integer to count and to increment forward, okay? So we can declare that integer within this declaration. And so I'll say int i equals zero. We have to specify the value, okay? Now I'll change here on the screen that there are actually semicolons that separate the three, sec the three sections there, okay? So we have int i equals zero, semicolon, and we would put some condition in here. The, commonly, we would just use a less than. Say I want to increment over 10 increments, I would do i equals zero, i less than 10, and then to increment, I want to increment i up by one for each time through the loop, okay? So what that's doing, so what we want to do is essentially this. We want to say i is equal to i plus one. Right, there are, there's another way to do that. We can do i plus equals one, and that's the same thing. So this plus equals operator takes the value, the object on the left, takes the object on the right and adds it to that, that object, okay? Take the object on the right, on the right-hand side, and add it to the, add that value to the object on the left. A shorthand way is I plus plus, which is actually where C plus plus gets its name. Okay, so I plus plus will take I and it will add one to it, and so that's what I will do here for the increment to iterate, and I will open and close the body of the for loop, and. Just for demonstration, I will just print to the screen the value of i. Okay. Let me clear this off and run the code. And so you can see it printed starting at zero, because we set i equal to zero, and we incremented up until i, as long as i is less than 10. Notice it wasn't less than or equal to 10, it was strictly less than 10. And so that's why on our screen we have it printed up 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 9. All right, and we often do it this way because in C++ indices, like we saw with vectors, start at 0. And so if you have a vector of size 10, let me do that, in fact, I'll include vector again. If we want to, to iterate through every element of the vector, we would do something like this. We have our standard vector. I'll call it of doubles, for example. Name it vec of length 10 with values of 2 in each element. Okay. Now let's say I want to take the original value in the vector at position i, and I want to add to it the value of i. So I'll be taking to the original value and adding i to it. Okay, and then I'll print it to screen the current value of vec of the ith position in vec, the ith element of vec, okay? So let's run that. Okay, so the first element, i equals zero, and so you can see two plus zero is still two. As we increment forward, i is increasing, and so when we take two plus i, we then get three, four, five, and so on until 11, for example. And so for loops are a handy way of dealing with vectors, although for loops come up all over the place when you're programming in C++. All right. Now I'll move on to talking about scope. 
All right. So if you've had some experience with C++ before, you'll, you'll know that for if statements, and for for loops, you actually don't always need these curly braces. Um, if the body of the conditional statement or of the for loop is only a single line, for example, if, let me type in int a equals 1, for example. If a is equal to 1, if I only have this single line, then I don't need the curly brackets. All right, I can print that and it will work correctly. The same thing with the for loop. If inside this for loop I only had one statement, I could get rid of these curly brackets. And it would still go through the, the for loop and the if statement. The reason why I've included these, I include these curly brackets even in cases where there is only one line and they're not necessary is because it reminds me what the scope of a variable is. So when I talk about scope of a variable, that's the, the area in the code where the, the variable is valid, where it actually exists. And generally, you can look at these curly brackets to tell you what the scope is. So if I declare a variable within an if statement, it is valid. It exists only within that if statement. So if I say int b equals 1, for example, but then out, outside of the if statement, I try to access that value of the variable, we'll get an error. Okay, and what does it say? It says error b was not declared in this scope. Okay, so we declared b inside the scope of this if statement. And so once we left the if statement, b was deleted. It's gone. And so now when I try to say print the value of b to the screen, it's not there. Okay? And so if you want to manipulate something within an if statement or a for loop, and you want to have that value afterwards, make sure you declare that variable beforehand like we did with A. Okay, the same holds true with the for loop. That if we declare a variable within the for loop, it's deleted at the end of the loop. It also holds true with functions. So this main function, um, if I declare a variable within this main function, once the function is over, the, the variable is deleted. Okay, that's not such a big deal with with this function main, because once main is over, the, the program is done. But when we talk about other functions, uh, that will be important to recognize the scope as it, as it relates to functions. Now you can create a global variable. So if I declare it before this main function, for example, int c equals 2, then the scope of that variable is the whole document that I have open, okay? So I should be able to run this and have C print to screen. And it did, but I used two, and so you couldn't tell what it was. Here, I'll run it again with C equals four. And there we get the value of C printed to the screen, okay? So scope is, again, uh, something that is very important for you to remember as you work on your coding assignments, and most likely, you'll have a bug once in a while that relates to scope. All right, so that concludes this segment. For the next segment, we'll move on to talking about pointers and iterators, and also we'll talk more about functions.